What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Existential Stoic Podcast. Uh, today, episode 46, we're going to talk about setting yourself up for success. Ooh. I am Danny. I'm here with my buddy, Randy. What's up, Randy? Hey, Danny. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. So setting yourself up for success, right? We all want this. I think everybody wants success. Why did you think this was a good uh, good focus for today? Well, as a matter of fact, I was listening to a YouTuber, successful businessman, but he's he's successful in more than not just financially successful. And this is what I really like about him. Like I'm very drawn to people who are successful financially, but also have figured out how to win at life. And I think that's like that's the biggest differentiating factor between like a financial success and someone who's actually won in life. And so I, I was watching, actually, I've probably watched like a dozen of his videos so far. His name is Alex Hormozzi. And He's good, yeah. <laughs> oh, phenomenal, phenomenal. And it's just like the, the realizations that I had from watching his videos. And I just haven't heard these things anywhere else. So uh, I want to be able to share that. You know, and I, I'm glad you brought that up too, because I, you know, what you said is so important. The idea, like, you know, we tend to think of success as like just very wealthy or just very famous. Like we think of it in these very sort of like cherry picking, just one thing type, you know, focus on that. That's the, you know, and I, we use wealth because it's an easy way to evaluate, compare, but it doesn't mean you're doing well. And I think, you know, it's kind of like what you said sort of speaks to like the, um, like the Greek idea of eudaimonia, right? The flourishing life. Like it's like you're successful in life, not just in what you do, but it's a well-rounded, right? Good life. It's, it's all around. You have a good, good character good personality, happy, positive, all these things that go with like being, you know, able to do things in the world. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. And so, so he suggested some things in there and we'll talk about them later, I'm sure. But it, it's kind of, <laughs> I mean, the, the idea for the episode, setting yourself up for success. I think that it's something that if you prepare for, you can really end up being a lot more successful than if you just, set out without preparing for it oh yeah definitely like i mean it's funny i think you know when you start to like even just have a basic rudimentary idea of what you want and commit to going for it you start to see the gain so quick and i think you know i like i noticed personally too like i think it's it's so it's so easy to feel like everything's like overwhelming or hopeless and feel like you're lost or that there's no point in trying. But once you start trying and you start to see success in even like a little area, I think it really does compound and snowball and you start to build out on, you know, you can start to build out really on your whole life and on making things better all around. I think that's where the success comes in. Right. And, it, but you do need to plan for that. You need to set yourself up. Cause I mean, it, I think it does involve kind of a lot. I mean, in the first part it involves like, you know, trying and having that like you know having even like the not just the motivation but you know the willingness to give it a shot to try to do something in the world that you want to do and then keep at it and to keep working at it and not get sort of knocked down so quickly by you know factors outside of yourself yeah so i guess to begin with you've kind of mentioned it a bit there is defining what you want and that's it's, it's funny because that's like the <laughs> first that's the first step but so often that can be one of the most difficult steps because it's like, it's like the more tangible and real and actual value you can place on something, the, the faster you'll get it. Like I have, I have, so, cause we both journal a lot. And so like a lot of the things I do is I write down goals. And when my goal is non-specific, like I want more money. Okay. When I have that goal, yeah. it never gets achieved. But when I write down, I want to earn X amount of dollars per month by this month, it gets done. And it's just like, yeah. but, but the important part is figuring out that goal and what it is for you. And also like that, I think that's an important thing, what it is for you, because where we get lost on this route to success is we want the things that will impress people on Instagram or TikTok, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and, it, and it's not. Uh, it, it's not part of who we are. It's not what we actually want. We just think that when we have that, other people will like us more, we'll be more popular, yada, yada, yada. Well, I think too, you know, he mentioned, um, 
I think he mentioned in the video you sent me that the guy did. I can't remember his name. What's his name? Alex <laughs> Hormozy. H O R M O Z. Okay. Yeah, look him up. Yeah, so, watch some of his videos. They're great. No, he is. He's great. And I think he mentioned something I really liked that he mentioned was this issue of, you know, and I think you're hitting the nail on the head there is one actually being able to clearly define your goals so you know what the hell you're actually going for. We've said before tons of times, right? Vague goals give vague results. You don't really know what you're aiming at. If I don't know that I want to increase my wealth X number, or I don't know that I want to complete this chapter this week, or, you know, whatever it is, or even just like to that, my goal is to work out five days this week, not two, not three, but five, you know, like having a specific number that you can actually like know that you've done it and writing it down is two huge steps to making it a realization. But the other important thing too, is like that whole issue we've talked about before of comparisons and if you're always looking to like impress people on YouTube or on, you know, TikTok or whatever, or you're, you're always comparing yourself to some external thing, there's always going to be people that have more, that are better. And it's really about like, what, what is success to you? What does it look like? You know, what, and I think he mentioned in his video that I really liked, he said, you know, when he first started out, he said something along the lines, like, you know, he thought of like wealth in terms of like meals, like how many meals he could afford. And that was his unit. And it's like, I like that because it was very personal. It was like, so if I'm doing well, I can afford lots of meals, right? You have this idea in your head of what it looks like, what the sort of, you know, relative sense of like having money looks like to you. Because I think that's important because, you know, we don't all need everything. We just need what's good for us to live a successful life and to live the life we want. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And also another thing, uh, the writing it down part. So writing it down, you and I both do this. And I think, I mean, it's something that we hear about so often. Like everybody says, write it down. <laughs> but if you're not writing it down, write it down. You, you have no idea how much more of an impact. Like I was listening, I'm listening to this book on Charlie Munger right now, who is Warren Buffett's investing partner. And it talks about Warren Buffett saying that like, if you haven't written it down, then it just means that you haven't put in enough time. Like you need to... He's like, anything worthwhile, you need to write it down. It needs to be written down. Do you know, and you know what's funny about that too, I think that people miss is like, it is, part of it's just the simple task of like, it takes 10 seconds to write down your goal. And you're 40% more likely to achieve it if you write it down. So right there, that's just stupid not to. It makes no sense. But the other side, I think that people often miss, at least that, and I've seen this in my own experience, is like, when I write down my goals, when I write down things I want, I also end up reflecting on how to get them. I also end up jotting down notes on like, well, if I want, if I want X, I should probably do Y and Z. I should probably, and I start thinking about in my head, especially too, like how to plan it out. How am I going to make it happen? I might jot down some of those notes on paper. And all of that is part of the thing. If you just think it and you let that thought go, it's like, who cares? You didn't do anything with it. But once you write it down, you've started actually doing something with it. And I think that's like the biggest difference that people miss. And it's the simplest goddamn thing in the world, right? It's like yeah. it's so easy. Yeah. And so like Brian Tracy, he wrote a great book called Goals. And this was like where I got the idea to kind of write down with a time limit on them when I'm going to achieve them and write down 100 goals that I want. But the first chapter of the book, he says, if you do these three things, you will achieve all of your goals uh, or at least very, very close. You know, if they're possible, you will achieve them. Those three things are write down your goals write down how to achieve them and work on your goals every day. <laughs> yeah, right. It's That's like, it. literally, it's, it's, so so, it's so insanely simple and everybody's looking for these complicated, what are the life hacks? How can I, how can I do more? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> just do these three things. Just do it Wait. again and again. Yeah. You know, it's funny too. And I think that's, I think so many people struggle with it too. Cause it's like, you get, we, we literally create so many limits for ourselves and so many obstacles that don't exist in reality that aren't even there. We set all these burdens on ourselves, all this pressure, instead of focusing on what can I do? How can I make it happen? What do I actually want? What does success look like? Instead of focusing on those things that are in my power that I can make happen, we worry about all this shit and make ourselves basically incapacitated, right? We, we make it so we can't act. And I think this is something we all struggle with at some point, right? The overwhelming fear, anxiety, you know, stress, hopelessness, and really all you need to do is start acting. And I think, yeah, like a lot of things can seem out of place, but once you start taking care of some, it's like you can just start building and you see that it's possible. Because I think our biggest thing with writing down too is that you're starting to take, 
you're starting to take responsibility for your goals, right? By writing them down, you're starting to say, how can I do this? What do I actually want? And you're starting to plan it. And like what you said too, I think that's important. Once you start doing it, writing a date is so helpful. And like being realistic too. And, and I think you get, I noticed this myself, you get better at time with how to date them appropriately and having a realistic idea. Because at first we're all kind of terrible at this. I think we don't always sort of grasp that, you know, how long things might take or, you know, obstacles. But again, these are all plastic. You can adjust them as you go if you need to. That's the other great thing. It's your life, right? You make it happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's really interesting because like you, once you, so like, for instance, in the morning, I write down 10 goals that I want with a time frame. And when I first started doing this, probably back in like February or January, something like that, it was it was very difficult because I didn't from one day to the next, I wouldn't know what the goals were like. They would change so dramatically. But now I've been doing it for months and literally every day, like my top seven goals are generally about the same thing. And then every few weeks I knock another one of them off and another one off and another. And it's just like, you get to, it, it becomes autopilot. Like you're just in that direction because you know, this is what you want to do. And you're just doing the stuff to get there. Well, you know, I like that too. Cause I noticed that myself as like, you get, you start to see more consistent patterns over time with what you're doing, both in your life and also aligning with your goals. And part of that is actually you're making, you're forcing yourself by doing this every morning, you're forcing yourself to be more aware of what you want by focused, right? Because our biggest, I think our biggest dilemma is, you know, we might wake up in the morning and say, I'm going to be productive. I'm going to do these three things. I'm going to get this done. But as soon as you wake up and start moving, life is all around you, right? And it's like, there's distractions, there's obligations, there's obstacles, there's, you know, work, whatever. And there's all these things you have to say yes and no to. And when you lack focus, you don't know what to say yes and what to say no to. But the more you focus, right, the more direction you have, the more intentional all your actions become. Especially, especially nowadays, it's super easy to get distracted. Like, as soon as you look at your phone or turn on a TV, it's like all of a sudden all your plans go out the window. And so like I, I, I notice a significant difference in like the days when I don't look at my phone and the days when I look at my phone, because it's like yeah. if I don't look at my phone, it's totally directed based on what I choose. If I look at my phone, it just goes off in a totally different direction. So it's come to a point where I'm just like, OK. Until I, until I do all this stuff, my whole morning routine and whatever work I need to do, until I do that, I know there's, I know there's notifications on my phone. They're just, <laughs> they're just going to stay there. I'm not going to look because they're just going to blow up the whole day. Well, you know what's important too? I think it's like, that's the other thing is like, as you, as soon as you start focusing on what's important to you, as soon as you find what, what matters to you, what, and I think this is what people also forget is that setting yourself up for success is also identifying your values. What's really important. Cause once you know that you can also really distinguish between what's really doesn't matter. Like, you know, it's funny. Like I know our routines in the morning are probably a little different. Cause I have, I have a puppy. So I get up in the morning and the first thing I do is I take him out. But when I do that, I actually jot down, I, I either use a notebook or my phone to write down to write instead of like, you know, cause sometimes it's just easier with him. But like, I basically have adjusted my routine to fit, the obligation there so that I still don't miss out on things. And I think because I recognize that value and you're right, if you get on your phone, if you start getting on TikTok, it's like you just waste this time just gets, goes away and you, you can't stay focused on things when you have all these ideas being thrown at you constantly. You know, when you're constantly being bombarded by different ideas, topics, whatever, entertain, you know, and all this, it's like you can't stay focused on the task. And so I think scheduling time for that is really crucial too. It's not that you can't use your phone, um, but, you know, you see a lot of people say like the first hour, I don't touch my phone or, you know, the first like whatever. So you can get this routine done, get started and get sort of in the right direction before you get distracted. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, if you win the first hour, you win the day. Definitely. Yeah. So we, we've kind of talked a little bit about. Um, well, let's let's talk a little bit more about how to prepare for success, because we mentioned that, yeah. you know, when. One of, one of my favorite quotes is that um, success is always intentional. Like I heard it a couple of yeah. times and then I actually heard it and it sunk in <laughs> and it opened up everything because I realized that 
nobody got to be a success without putting in the work. Like, sure, people will be trust fund babies and they'll inherit a lot of wealth, but they usually live a terrible life and they hate it. But every real success out there, it was intentional. It required planning. It required work. It required effort and struggle. And so let's talk about how to prepare for success, how to set up the, the ideal environment. You know, life. I think I like what you said there too, because you're pointing out, like, I think a lot of people, the biggest struggle too, and I think we're all guilty of this. I don't think there's anybody that's not guilty of this is envying those who you perceive to have wealth, status, power, envying the wealth, status, power, but not really conceptualizing what it took to get there, what it meant, sacrifices, obstacles. And so what you're really wishing for is like a lotto win or something. You're wishing for an immediate situation change with no effort. And it's like, well, that doesn't ha- I mean, it doesn't really happen. Like, And, if you and really they've want- shown conclusively on studies that all the lotto winners are more, more unhappy afterwards. Yeah. You know, it ruins they didn't really, life. they didn't plan for it, right? Yeah, they didn't plan. They're not successful, right? They're not, they don't, and it doesn't matter. Even if you give somebody a ton of money right now, it's like, if they don't have direction, goals, plans, what they want to do, it's like, they're still not going to have that after the fact. That the, who you are doesn't change. And I think, I think that's one of the biggest things with success that's hard to grapple with is like, to really be successful, it takes a lot of self work at work. And like, you know, it takes a lot of self reflection, awareness, and like that kind of, work on yourself to have a successful life, to be successful in the world. So, I mean, I think one of the most important things personally is like identifying what matters to you, your values. You know, what do you think is important? Why? And how, because that all aligns with your goals, with who you want to be, you know, all of that I think is crucial. But, and, yeah. and recognizing that it's not what society thinks you should do. You know? Yeah. No. <laughs> and it's not what your parents think you should do. And it's not what your friends think you should do. It's like, what really resonates in you? And, and I talk, I, I've talked about this a few times before. I, I think it's kind of really hilarious how, you know, like when I was younger, I did what I wanted to do. And because it was unpopular, I was made fun of a lot. And so I changed completely. Like I used, I used to love reading fantasy books like Lord of the Rings and all that stuff. Oh, they're great. I used, to, yeah. Yeah, I used to love painting these little miniatures. And so like doing all these things that were like nerdy or whatever. And I, I was just tormented in school for it. And I was like one of the uncool kids and all this stuff. And so I stopped doing that. And I became the person that I thought I was supposed to be. I started working on cars. I started lifting weights. I started doing pickup and like being able to talk to any girl and just like, so like I went through this whole thing and then now I come back to, oh, the stuff that I was doing before is actually really popular now. And, and it's like, and I still enjoy doing it. So why not just do it now? But it's kind of like one you of life's, life's comedies. Well, it is though. And that's the funny thing. It's like, you know, if you focus on what's popular and stuff, that stuff just is cyclical. It comes back around and it doesn't really matter. And I think what I liked about, what I like about that story is too, is like, you were doing, you, you identify, because you were young, you identify what you really liked doing, right? And because of external pressures, and I mean, you know, everybody's really vulnerable at that age too, it, you know, it's hard. But you did all these things, changed in all these ways, but it's like, what I like about that too is like, you know, for all of us, it's going to be different stuff. You know, the things we like to do, the things that we really value, they're going to be different. Like some of us might really want a family. Some of us might really want, you know, to live in the woods and just do, you know, whatever. But like, they will be different. And if you can't identify that, you'll never be successful on your own terms. And you'll never be really happy because the good life is your life, right? And I love that example because there are people who probably like working on cars and like doing that stuff. And that's fine. But like in your circumstances, it just didn't make any sense, but you did it because, right, social pressure. And that's like, and I think, and I think that's probably harder now. It has to be, right? With social media and everything and that kind of influence has got to make it really difficult to sort of identify what really matters to you and what's really valuable without that external influence yeah. it's funny when I, I was actually talking about this in my class the other day and one of my students actually said they were like you know oh i prefer it when my parents just tell me what to do and i was like and they were like you know because then i'm not responsible and i was like yeah i get the feeling right because you don't want to be 
if it goes wrong or if something happens, you can blame someone else, right? Well, you told me to do this. You told me that this was better. or You told me this was valuable. But I was like, at the end of the day, you're still to blame. I was like, that's still your fault because you didn't think about it. You didn't reflect on it. You didn't understand if it was even worthwhile for you. Like that's, and, you know. And worse than that, you got this one shot here to really like make it. <laughs> you, I mean, you can either suffer yeah. through it or you can make it the best that you that it can be and so yeah. like but it's up to you and whatever it is the time's eventually going to run out it will it will and you know the thing i like too it's like you know i think one of the things i've learned and probably in the last 10 years i think is really important is <clears throat> you know you have this one shot but you can always start you can always start to make it yours you can always start to be a success to plan to be a success and to make whatever time you have the best it can possibly be. Cause I think there's nothing worse than not trying. Cause then you just accept some shitty situation for, you know what I mean? And like, instead of trying to make, cause as soon as you try to make it better, it gets better. It absolutely always gets better as soon as you try. Cause now it's yours, you know? And I think, so I think taking, you know, being intentional, taking responsibility, being an agent is crucial to being successful. You have to figure that out in order to start living, you know, the life that you want, having a good life. Absolutely. And you mentioned it a couple of times, taking action. And I, I have this, mem- so like one of these memories, this guy who taught me how to do SEO back, back in the day, um, he had a YouTube channel. I was like a huge fan of his and I bought his courses and I learned how to do SEO and, you know, I made money doing that. But I, I distinctly remember this one webinar that he was having because like people kept asking him, he, he basically like presented people if you want to start your own company doing SEO, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And all these people were like, well, what if I do this? And then that happens. Well, what if I do this? And then that happens. <laughs> well, what if I do this? And then that happens. And it, it struck me so clearly when he said, he's like, listen, it doesn't matter. You just do it. You'll yeah. figure it out. There's no way to plan ahead yeah. of the time. And he's <laughs> like, this is the thing that separates the people who will succeed from those who won't is you just go. You don't have to have it all figured out beforehand. You just go and then you figure it out. Yeah. You just take a shot. You know, that's the thing, because I think that is the critical difference, right? When you're talking about goals and goal accomplishment, the people that just try, the thing about them is that whatever they face, whatever obstacles, whatever unknowns, they're just going to keep trying. They'll keep pushing ahead because, you know, we talked about this, I think, uh, one of the last episodes, right? The idea that, you know, it's like once you have the idea of the goal, it's already achieved. It's just a matter of getting there. I think you quoted like Will Smith or something who said something along those lines, mm-hmm. right? That, you know, once I know I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. I think writing down goals, that's why it's so crucial. Because like once I know this is my direction, I'm headed that way. Nothing's going to stop me, right? And I think, you know, this is one of the difficulties. There's people that keep asking those kind of questions. It's like, is this what you really want? Because you're just looking for excuses to fail now before you even start. And if that's what you want, then just quit. Just quit. You'll you'll succeed in failing, right? I mean, you'll, that's the easiest thing to succeed in is to just not do something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It kind of it kind of it, like this whole. Uh, okay, so Yoda said it: "Do or do not. There is no try." <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, and th- and it kind of gets to the point where those are the two options that you have: you either do it all the yeah. way through, no matter what it takes, or you just or you don't. There really is no trying. Like because here's the thing: if you really want it. It doesn't matter the obstacles. You'll figure out a way. Yeah. Well, and I think it's like, you know, that's why starting is so critical too, because once people start to realize that all these things that they built up in their head are false, all these challenges, obstacles, they can all be overcome, that that's where that progress just starts to really happen. And I think, you know, it's at core, I think this is why you need to know your values. You need to know your goals because at the core of success, and I, I really, I wanted to point out, I really like thinking of it in terms of the good life too, because I think it captures the broader idea of like, not just success in the sense of financial, but everything else. But like, I think all of that, you know, goes together because once you know what you want and stuff and you're, you're taking that action, it's like, it doesn't matter what happens. You're just going to get there. And once you see that it, that's most of it's made up, most of it's like fantastical things that are going to happen. And that it's really, you know, within your power to just make it happen. It's like, none of this matters. None of those other bullshit that people are stressed about or worried. It's all obstacles you set upon yourself. And I think most of the time, you know, it's because we don't know ourselves. And once you do, once you know your values, your goals, it's like, it's easier to do that, right? Because you're not worried about this 
supposed failure, supposed obstacles. You're going to just try and do it because it's something that matters to you. Definitely, definitely a great point. Um, there were, Oh yeah. So uh, another thing that I wanted to mention in terms of preparing for success is actually planning. So like oh, once yeah. you, once you figure out what you want and what you once you figure out what your values are, then actually planning. And this is something that's like it's hard because it's work. And 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 also some people kind of just get stuck in this phase where they're just like they they have to write out the whole entire bit. They've never had a business before, but they have to write out the whole business plan and they have to get this business coach and all this business stuff and they never actually get started. So like there's there's the two sides of this thing. But what I wanted to say about planning is uh, first off that it's it's not the actual plan that matters. It's the process nope. of planning because that like that gets you primed for what's going to come a- ahead. Um, and the second part is that no matter how hard you think it's going to be, it's going to be like a thousand times harder. So, like, yeah. <laughs> so like planning for that as well, uh, because you know that what? way oh. that way you prime yourself for the difficulties when when they come up. You like when when something comes up that's unexpected and really a pain. You're like, ah, I knew this was going to happen. Instead of instead of being like oh my gosh, this is terrible. How am I ever going to make it through? You're like, I knew this would happen. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew something was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, I was like the uh, the idea of negative visualizations. And I think like, what is it? The, the thinking of it happening a thousand times over and over again. And I think the guy mentioned that in the video, right? Where like, if something bad happens, you know, part of it is like a psychological game. It's like getting yourself accustomed to what this feels like and recognizing that if it just happened, if you visualize it happening a ton of times, one right after another, You'd realize by the thousandth time that it just doesn't matter, right? It's not important because the fact is it happened. Now you got to move on from it, right? And I think that's one of the biggest blocks we all place on ourselves is we act like these little obstacles are the stopping point, that everything stops right now. And it's like, nope, life keeps going. So you can either just move on from that and do something else. And yes, sometimes it sucks. Sometimes they're hard, but you just got to keep going because if you stop, everything that you're doing stops. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, it's a good point. And I mean, it's worth kind of going going into that a little bit deeper because it yeah. does have it, it's something that can like change your life almost instantaneously if you really get it. Like, let's say you send an embarrassing text message to the wrong person, <laughs> or let's say you like accidentally really offend somebody, or you do something that you realize is so freaking stupid, and like you're mortified and it could ruin your whole day, your whole week, even your whole month. But like the idea of the thousand X negative is that you just see that. And sure, this first time it's terrible. You know, yeah. you feel the full brunt of it, but take some mental energy and say, okay, now let's pretend that this happened again and again and again. And every single day for three years, the same thing happened. Don't you think at the end of that three years, you'd be a little bit more like, eh, whatever. And the crazy thing is, once you get that perspective, you can be that way today. There's no reason to wait, right? There's no reason reason to stay at number one. You just jump to the end. And I think that's that's what's great about it is it's like the thousand X negative example is really good because it's just about thinking about and taking a perspective on things that's different from what is actually happening. And I think it, it helps us to like get a grip on our emotional state and on, you know, what's going on around us so that we can better act in the world by just realizing that most of these things are things that we're making into something big, right? Most of these obstacles we're making into something catastrophic that's going to waste energy, waste time, distract us all, like you said, for a week, for days, you never know. It's going to be on your mind in the background. If you can get past it, it's behind you. You move on, you go forward. I think, yeah, it's a great, it's a great way to think because it's really all about, I think it highlights that major thing of focus, right? Of being intentional, having a direction and not letting yourself getting pushed and pulled because life does that to us, right? It makes us go all over the place. And it's like trying to find that way to stay on course, which is probably one of the hardest things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to add another thing to uh, setting yourself up for success. So, and, and it's kind of the whole idea of comparing yourself to others 
uh, or also yeah. perspective, you know, however you want, however you want to phrase it. So like this, this guy, Alex, we should just have named this episode, the Alex Hormozzi episode. Right. Um, no, so it, anyway, was good, it was a good, he did a good job with it. I liked it. Yeah. It was a good yeah, video. I think he helpful. did this one episode on like, eight, or was this the same one? The eight things that he learned from Charlie Munger. That was the same one. Yeah. Okay, it was yeah. The eight things he learned from. Yeah. yeah. So one of these things was that uh, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, undisputedly some of the best investors ever. Yeah, ever. yeah without doubt. Okay. Yeah. And yet, every year, somebody outperforms them. Like, yeah. <laughs> the best ever, and yet they're still being outperformed every year. So, like, the, the idea that there will always be people better than you and this is something that helped me out a lot because i i went from a place of competing and also being extremely envious or jealous in a very negative fashion towards them to all of a sudden being like hey i can learn from them i can be happy for them and also realizing that maybe that's not what i want too you know, like having having that success, it requires a lot larger commitment than I would even want to do. So, yeah, yeah. but but it allowed me also to um, to basically put up a, a marker that anytime I compare myself with other people, it's like big red flag. Stop. Yeah. Let it go. And then compare yourself to yourself last year or compare yourself to yourself 10 years ago. And it's just like, oh, yeah, I'm doing really good. And, it, and also like in terms of perspective, like across the whole world, most of us are probably doing, I mean, if, you're, if you have access to the internet, you're doing better than, you know, 25% of the world. Yeah. Well, no, I, th- I think that's crucial. And, you know, from that too, just realizing like, you know, that, when we when we focus on that kind of negative sort of like comparisons, I think that the danger is too, like you said, you're also like you're forgetting what's required sometimes to get there. The sacrifices, right? Like if you want to do if you have many interests and you want to cultivate many interests, that kind of life is not going to work because 90 percent of the time it requires such effort and such work to get there that you're that that's all you're focused on all week right you don't have time for other stuff and i think so this is this is what's crucial about understanding what really matters to you right what life is really the life that you want to create because success is about creating a successful life it's about about creating a life that is your own it's about really i think like that's it one of the reasons why i always love the uh you know existentialists because authenticity the idea of self, like making the world that you want to live in your values your life who you are making all of that, right? And defining that and realizing it in the world because it's ultimately your own. Nobody else's. And I think that's crucial. Yeah, I like that too, because it's like those comparisons, I think, are what kill so many people, right? That constant worry, because it's like then you never have enough because you can always look outside and say, oh, they have more, they did better. This, and it's like, well, what the hell does success mean to you then? Mm-hmm. And I think that's he, part of planning for success, right? And, oh, go ahead. The, here's right. another sticking point for people with success. They want success, but they're not willing to fail. And yeah. I think that like in order to succeed, you have to be enthusiastic about failing. It's <laughs> yeah. like fail fast, fail often, fail better. And they say that masters fail more times than other people even try. So like that's, yeah. that's how you learn just by failing. And it, it's, it seems it seems counterintuitive and it seems painful, but the failures are what, that's how we learn very quickly. And so the, the well, more ha- you can fail, the more, the quicker you can succeed. Well, it's, it's also, yeah, it's how we learn. It's how we figure out what the problems are and how to overcome them. And I think the biggest difference, like you said, right, is that the masters fail so often because most of the other embrace or face the failure right they don't try to overcome it they don't try and get past it and i think that's the other point because once you get past it you're going to fail again you're bound to it's always going to happen and you have to keep at it and even you know it's like i don't think there's anything we can do that we're not going to fail at at some point and then you keep going it just becomes part of the successful process right 
Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, we said so much in this episode, what do you think are some of the main takeaways do you think that people should for planning to, you know, really preparing yourself and planning for success, a successful life? Well, what are you thinking? I mean, I'm definitely thinking, you know, we have to, I think goals and values, getting those clear. So writing them down, because I think that's really one of the first steps to even being able to plan and being able to actually sort of have a direction and focus, which is what you're really after, I think, is direction and focus. So it's like getting that stuff clear, which is a lot of self-reflection and and thinking. Once you start doing that and writing those things down, I think the sort of planning becomes part of that process. It just sort of inevitably follows because you start thinking about how to realize it. And you're sort of on track there. But I, th- I really do. I think the values and, and, and understanding, you know, that you can do it, that none of the stuff you're placing before you and the, mentally, these imaginary sort of obstacles, limits, sort of blocks, none of that stuff is really true unless you let it be true or let, make it true by not trying. So I think, you know, those would be like probably my top things, I think. So, you know. Yeah, I, those are great ones. Uh, I'm actually going to say something that we kind of didn't, mentioned yet go for it yeah um so the the mentality so like a lot of people i think don't succeed because they give up too quickly and so the mentality that i'm going to fail until i get it so like les brown always said it's not over until i win (laughs) And, and it's it's that mentality because given a long enough time frame you can achieve anything it's just like, you know, mathematically, you can achieve anything on a long enough time frame. And mo- but most people want success, you know, in the next two months or this year or whatever it is. But stop thinking in terms of such short time spans. Think this decade, this 30 years, whatever it is, because then you're giving yourself a chance to actually get it right. And, and, then, you'll, and then you'll be messing up. You'll be two years in and you'll be messing up over and over and over and over again. <laughs> yeah. And instead of getting down on yourself, you're say, hey, I'm only two out of 30 years into this. I still got a lot of time yeah. to figure this out to get better. So like the, the idea of embracing failure and also having a longer time horizon, I think that's really important in success. Oh, dude, there, I think that, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. It's crucial. Especially in like embracing the failure and having a longer time are so important because it's like it's also that attitude that goes with it right of just like um these are my goals they're going to happen they're going to be realized in the world and that's it i think those are so good and i think that goes with planning too planning for it being ready for it and it's it takes time it does take time to break that mentality those expectations really quick expectations of instant gratification all of that it takes time to sort of i think break out of but it is doable and i think everyone can succeed the biggest block is that we're in our own way. I really do think that's true. Like, And, and uh, you mentioned it right there, how like uh, everybody thinks it's kind of like black and white or, or like a one or a zero or something like that, binary almost, where like either you are or you're, or you're not. But it's not yeah. particularly that way. It's, hey, if I can get 1% better, then I'm a little bit closer. And then from there, another 1% better. And so like with the planning, I remember for a long time, I wouldn't plan because I wanted to have the perfect plan. You know, I wanted to have it all figured <laughs> yeah. out and I wouldn't start because I wanted to be perfect. And it's like, just having something that's decent is better than nothing. And it's better than perfect because perfect doesn't exist. It's funny you mentioned that, you know, that, that whole mentality of having the perfect plan, right? And you, so you just keep planning and planning and planning. It's like, it's actually, that's like one of those, um, mechanisms to keep you from trying right to keep you to block yourself from going forward from actually just rolling the dice or taking that action and i'm glad you brought that up too because i think that's important right this idea that you have to start at some point but i also think what you mentioned there too is important because like that goes back to self comparisons i think what people focus on they focus on what's outside of them rather than their own lives their own experiences and what's inside and once you start comparing yourself to yourself you realize that as soon as you start whatever you're doing, you're already on the road to success. You're already more successful than you were the second you start because you're doing it. And I think we forget this so much that when we have this conception of success built from the outside, it seems impossible, insurmountable. But as soon as you start building it from one from your own life, you're immediately on the right path because you're already making it happen just by acting. And I think when we forget that, it's like you can't really, you can't do it because you're always going to find negative comparisons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. 
So I think I think everybody's ready to succeed now. Yeah, they should be, right? That should be all the information you need. That should be ready to go, plan for success. So anything else you want to add? Uh, I think you just need to just go for it. You don't need to get it all figured yeah. out. Just start now. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. I think just start now. Start writing stuff down. Start getting those things out there and start acting in the world, right? Set yourself up, in other words, for success. <laughs> well, thank you all for sticking with us, listening. Uh, check us out, obviously, on YouTube. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. It really helps us out. This was episode 46, Setting Yourself Up for Success. We'll be back midweek with a short, quick fix, a short 10-minute episode covering one self-help topic. Until then, though, it was great. See you, Randy. Later, Danny. <laughs>